I found the best way to mine cryptocurrency. And all you'll need is a Raspberry Pi and extra internet bandwidth. The stuff you're not even using, the stuff you don't care about. Now, this is not financial advice, but this is a profitable way to mine cryptocurrency on a Raspberry Pi. It sounds awesome, right? So in this video, I'm gonna show you the Mysterium Network, a decentralized VPN solution, which yeah, sounds cool enough by itself, but when you and your Raspberry Pi participate in this decentralized VPN, you can earn cryptocurrency. So if you love Raspberry Pis and the idea of mining some cryptocurrency, this is pretty cool. You should do this right now. I'll walk you through every step from setting up our Raspberry Pi to getting the Raspberry Pi set up on the Mysterium network as a node runner. A lot of stuff, but I'll walk you through it. It's very quick and very fun. Oh, and also, if you don't have a Raspberry Pi, no sweat. You can do this on anything, a Windows computer, a Linux VM, a Docker container, anywhere. So <laughs> get your coffee ready. I've already had like 15 cups. Catch up, let's do this. Oh, wait, 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 hold on real quick. Cameron, tell them about our sponsor today. And a big thank you to Sneak for sponsoring this video. They sneak your code to help you find vulnerabilities. We'll tell you more about them later. Okay, first, what are you going to need to start mining cryptocurrency with your extra internet bandwidth? I still can't get over how cool that is. What are you gonna need? I love projects like this because you really don't need much, just a stinking computer, any kind of computer. So it could be a Raspberry Pi and they make it super easy to do this. It could be a Docker container. It could even be your computer, the one you're watching this video on right now, a Windows PC or a, a Mac, Linux, of course, and of course, any Linux-based machine in the cloud. Now this should go without saying, but you'll also need some spare internet bandwidth. So for example, if your internet is already just dying right now, playing this video, then you probably shouldn't share your bandwidth because you don't have anything to share. But if you're like me and you've got a gigabit connection or 250 or 500 or whatever, then yeah, you got some spare stuff to use. And finally, like everything in technology, including blockchain and crypto, you're gonna need some coffee, especially this kind of stuff. You need coffee, networkchuck.coffee. Now, before you can start mining with your extra internet bandwidth, it's probably a good idea to figure out how that's actually going to work. Like, what is this Mysterium thing? Kind of sounds mysterious. It's in the name. <laughs> so let's talk about it. As I said before, Mysterium is a decentralized VPN. And this just sounds cool, but what is that? Well, let's first talk about how a normal VPN works. When I am trying to browse safely on the internet, I will connect to a VPN provider, connect to one of their servers, and I'll use that server to securely surf the internet, visiting networkchuck.com, YouTube, Twitter, or any other site I go to. And the benefit is that it keeps me safe and anonymous. All of these sites I'm visiting think that this is my IP address, the IP address of the VPN server I'm connecting to, and they never know my real IP address. And also, all my internet traffic is encrypted, giving me the added benefit of my ISP not being able to see what I'm doing either because they would love to know what I'm doing and then sell it to somebody. But we don't wanna do that, right? We wanna keep it hidden, stay anonymous. Now this right here is great and you should definitely use a VPN, but it's not all rosy. There are a few flaws with this. One of the main glaring ones is that it's not decentralized, it's centralized, which what does that mean? It means that this VPN provider is one company, we'll call it one company. And this one company has control of all the servers they offer to you. They have control of this server I'm connecting to, which means a few things. First, they know who I am because I had to get an account and I had to pay for it. So they have my banking information. They know what I'm visiting, my internet logs. And yes, many providers will say they do not keep track of logs and we have a good reason to trust them for that, but you never know. In theory, all of my logs, all of the, the list of things I'm visiting are in one central location. And if the government wanted to find out what I'm doing, they could bust down a door and get the information. And this is where decentralized VPN really shines. It's actually pretty cool. Check this out. With decentralized VPN like Mysterium, there are no centralized servers to connect to. They don't have any. Instead, we're connecting to Deb and her computer in her house in Boston. You see, Deb here has a Raspberry Pi in her house operating as a Mysterium node runner. So when I connect to my VPN using Mysterium, I'm actually connecting to the Raspberry Pi inside her house. And now, and this is really strange, I, I get it, it really is. Now, when I visit places on the internet, like YouTube or Twitter, they think I am Deb. They see Deb's IP address instead of mine. Or maybe I connect to Bernard Hackwell over here in London because I want to watch some shows that aren't available to me in the US. So using Mysterium, I can connect to Bernard Hackwell's Raspberry Pi over here in London and suddenly I'm using his IP address and YouTube, Netflix, and all the websites think that I am him, hiding my identity and giving me access to things that maybe I couldn't access because of geo-blocked content. Now, at first glance, this sounds like normal centralized VPN, right? Because every other VPN provider has an option to select country and unlock geo-block things. You can go to France, you can go to England, Russia, wherever. But the difference here is that these servers aren't owned by one person. They're owned by a bunch of people. You see, if this were centralized, Mysterium would have all the servers. They'd have control of every server. 
they would have control of all the logs and, and know where you're going all the time. But with decentralized VPN, they don't have that. Which means that if the government or some other company or whatever wants to come at Mysterium and say, hey, we wanna see what Network Chuck's been doing. We think he's been buying some illegal coffee. We wanna find out what he's been doing. But Mysterium can't give him anything because they don't, they don't have it. I haven't been connecting to Mysterium servers. I've been connecting to Debs and Bernard Hackwell servers. Now this is cool for a few other reasons too. I ran into this when I was on my road trip and I was using one of those normal centralized VPN providers. I would connect to their server and they have a list of IP addresses that they use that are pretty well known. So one company, that's the name of our fictional VPN company, they have a list of IPs. And when I connect to them, I will end up using one of those IPs. And what I ran into is when I was trying to watch HBO Max, get my Harry Potter on, I was being blocked. HBO was like, hey, you can't use that. We block access to our site from known VPN provider uh, IP addresses. But with decentralized VPN, HBO Max can't do a dang thing about that. Because when we're using Mysterium VPN, we're not connecting to one provider with a list of known IP addresses. We're connecting to Dev's house. We're connecting to Bernard Hackwell's house. And those are residential IP addresses. They're not on any list. I don't think they are. And from HBO's perspective or whatever I connect to's perspective, I'm just Deb, regular old person with my residential IP address, my regular internet connection, accessing their services. So what this actually unlocks is true geo unblocking. All these streaming providers or any other provider can't just start blocking residential IP addresses. So this unlocks something pretty cool. And that's one thing I love about decentralization, whether it's with finance and currency or the internet, people can't control it. They can't control what we have access to and that's the freedom that this kind of stuff opens up. And then one more cool thing about this as far as using it before I start talking about becoming a node runner and that's, it's pretty dang anonymous. Can I spell anonymous on my first try? Anonymous. I think I did. <laughs> I'll check it later. You see, when I sign up for Mysterium VPN, I'm not setting up like an account or anything. I'm not putting in my email address and my my name and my, my home address and my credit card. No, 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 no. It's setting up a unique identity on the blockchain, a random string of numbers and letters, kind of like a wallet. It's my unique identifier and no one actually knows it's me, Network Chuck. It's just a random string of characters. And random string of characters is gonna connect to Bernard Hackwell, but I don't know what's Bernard Hackwell. I know Bernard Hackwell is a random string of characters because that's his nodes identifier, just a random crypto generated address on the blockchain. I don't know him, he doesn't know me. And just like normal VPN, it's using WireGuard and OpenVPN to encrypt my stuff. And then to make it truly anonymous, the way you pay for it is with crypto, cryptocurrency. And it's pay as you go. You only pay for what you use. And it's wicked cheap. It's like 0.00, .00 <laughs> zero five missed tokens. Talk about that here in a bit per hour and 0 0.0913 missed per gigabyte. And right now missed token is equal to 50 cents USD. So wicked cheap. So now let's talk about becoming a node runner. Now this question may have popped up into your head. If you're paying money to use this VPN service, who's the money going to? Cause you're not using the central lies servers of the VPN provider. You're using someone else's server. That's where becoming a node runner is pretty stinking cool. Most of what you're paying to use that VPN is going straight into Deb's pocket, going straight into Bernard Hackwell's pocket. They're letting you use their extra bandwidth and their IP address, and you're paying them some missed tokens, effectively mining cryptocurrency with your extra bandwidth. So let's focus on that. Why should you become a node runner? What are the benefits and the downsides? Because there, there are some things you have to consider. So the obvious no brainer reason why you should do this is because you can make some extra money with stuff you're not even using anyway. Now, how much money you can make, it depends, like everything in life. But here's their leaderboard, and here's what the top earners made, based on what country they're in. And again, this is from doing nothing but just letting someone else use your internet. Another cool thing is that while you are mining crypto, and that's normally seen as a thing like killing the planet, you're <laughs> using a ton of electricity and you're killing everything, this is actually saving the planet in a way. You're sharing what you are not using and you already have it. And in the process, you're fighting censorship. You're helping people all over the world get access to information that should be freely available to them. And it's my opinion that an internet that is more open and censor free is a better internet. So you're helping create a better internet. Now I know it sounds kind of corny, but it is kind of what you're doing. Now I could talk about the benefits of this and how cool it is all day, but let's focus on some realities here. Some of the maybe downsides and things you have to know about when you take the steps into doing this. First, you may not be allowed to do this. Your ISP or your internet service provider may not like you doing this. You're essentially operating a VPN service inside of your house and some ISPs have a problem with that. So what do you do? 
you gotta be careful. Maybe find out if your ISP cares or not. Send a letter, email, chat message. Mysterium does have some information below on how you can find out if your ISP cares. And if they do, I don't know what'll happen. If it's a slap on the wrist or they cancel your service, I don't know. So I can't give you that advice. All I can say is be careful. And then speaking of being careful, <laughs> someone else is gonna be using your internet when you start operating as a node runner. And they might be looking at weird stuff. They might be downloading weird stuff using your identity. And yeah, when they are using you as a VPN provider, their traffic is encrypted, right? But when <laughs> they go out to weirdstuff.com, they see your IP address as the one accessing it. So that can be a cause for concern, but thankfully there are mitigations put into place to help you with that. First, Mysterium does have a whitelist of things that are allowed and blacklist of things that aren't allowed on their network. So they do keep a lot of the weird stuff out. And also coming down the pipe pretty soon for Mysterium, they'll implement a thing called network slicing, where you can choose exactly what kind of network traffic you want coming across your internet. Whether you only want social media stuff coming across, only streaming stuff, you can choose that, but that's TBD. Now, beyond these risks, it's pretty much only upsides. It's just a cool thing to get involved with and you can make some money. You can actually have profitable mining on your Raspberry Pi, which is a really cool thing to think about. But I wanna tell you, don't get too crazy because as it stands now and probably won't change, you can only have one Mysterium node runner per public IP address, which means if you're thinking, oh, I'm gonna load up 50 Raspberry Pis in my house and I'm gonna mine and become a millionaire, sorry, <laughs> it's only gonna work with one Raspberry Pi in your house, unless you have more than one IP address, a public IP address, like I do. So I've got a few things running in my house. <laughs> the other option is to use the cloud. You can spin up multiple cloud-based machines on services like Linode and you can have multiple node runners out there. We'll talk about that here in a bit. But anyways, that's Mysterium. It's a very cool thing and it's a lot more than VPN actually. They're enabling a lot more with what they call the open network protocol. I think, right? Yeah, I think so. And the VPN portion is just one of their dApps or decentralized apps. That's a crypto thing. So now <laughs> that we have a bit of an understanding about what Mysterium actually is and a few of the risks involved, we can now take our journey, take our first few steps into setting up a Mysterium node runner and start making some sweet, sweet mist token off of our extra bandwidth. Now, before we get started, let's take a quick coffee break and I'll tell you some scary stories about your code. Yeah, your code's kind of scary, or it can be. And this coffee break in the entire video is sponsored by Sneak. Now, in case you didn't know, cryptocurrency, blockchain, it's all code. Now, you know what's scary about that? Code can be hacked. I mean, you know that, right? We talk about it here on the channel all the time. We do some hacking stuff and there are a ton of vulnerabilities out there. SQL injections, remote code executions, all kinds of stuff. And while they're fun to hack, ethically, of course, they're not fun to have inside your own code, inside your own applications. That's where a company like Sneak comes in. They're kind of like Grammarly for your code, which is kind of cool. Sneak will auto magically scan your code, dependencies, containers, configs, and will find and fix vulnerabilities in real time. Let me show you how easy it is. I got a link below sneak.com forward slash network Chuck. Check it out. Here I'm going to have Sneak check on Bernard Hackwell's code. Super easy to sign up. I'm going to click on sign up with GitHub. And once I've connected Sneak to my GitHub, I can start the process. I'll have it scan some of my repos here. Important scan. And dang, within moments, look at this. It found a ton of stuff but thankfully stuff that Sneak can fix right away for either my Docker container or my code. All I have to do is click on fix vulnerabilities. Just one little click. It will automatically open up a fix pull request telling me all the issues it's gonna fix a lot. Look at all this stuff. And then all I have to do is click on open a fix PR. And if you're wondering what a pull request is, we're actually gonna do that here in this video later. So buckle your seatbelts. And bam, just like that, Sneak has a fix for 69 vulnerabilities. And all I have to do is merge this pull request with my code. Now it does all this right from your existing tools, workflows, IDE, CLIs, repos, pipelines, Docker Hub, everywhere. You can do it everywhere. And it's free, <laughs> like seriously, it's free. So check the link below, sign up for free today and sneak your code for vulnerabilities. Now, like all my Raspberry Pi videos, the first step is to bake our pie, to prepare it, make it ready to do some cool stuff. So grab that micro teeny little SD card and find your SD card reader. Hold on, I can't find mine. One second, ah, here it is, okay. Slide that teeny tiny guy into your USB adapter and then go plug that sucker into your computer. I'll be right back. Boop, ba -da boop, love that sound. And then we'll launch the Raspberry Pi OS imager. This is a tool we'll use to write our Raspberry Pi OS to this SD card. I love it because you can get it on Mac, Linux, and of course, Windows, everywhere, love it. And by the way, if you already have Raspberry Pi OS on your Raspberry Pi, then you can skip ahead. If not, let's keep going. Now first we'll choose our OS or our operating system. 
Go ahead and click on that. And from here, we're gonna go Raspberry Pi OS Other. And we'll pick the Raspberry Pi OS Lite 32-bit. Now keep in mind, this OS is a light version, which means it only has command line, no GUI, which is fine for our purposes in this video. If you care about a GUI, then select something else, like the full version. And then we'll choose our storage. I'm gonna click on that and find my SD card. There he is right there. And then hold on, before you click right, we gotta do one more thing. Our super secret menu, get ready. Hit the keys, Control, Shift, X. Woohoo! Super secret menu. What we're doing here is setting up a headless mode for our Raspberry Pi. It's got no head. What, what I mean is that we don't need a uh, computer monitor. We don't need a, a computer. Uh, I can't even think right now. A uh, keyboard or a mouse to do things on this like you normally would. Check this out. I'll walk you through it. First, we're going to enable SSH so we can remotely access this. And then we'll set a password for our default user Pi. Go and set mine. And then a very crucial part if you're going to be using Wi Fi. We can go ahead right now and configure Wi-Fi for our Raspberry Pi. I'm gonna plug in my SSID and password. Let me go find it. And then that's pretty much it. I'm gonna click on save. And now, now we're ready to write. So go ahead and click write, say yes. And just a slight little small, oh, what's going on? Okay, it's okay. Everything's okay, guys. Coffee break time. Whew, calm down. Okay, mine is done. I'm gonna go grab my SD card real quick. I'll be right back. Whew, hot, hot. No, I'm just kidding, it's not hot. But it has finished baking. <laughs> if I can catch it. So we're gonna take the SD card out and slide that sucker back into my Raspberry Pi, right in his little back pocket here. There we go. And then now all I have to do is plug in his power and let that guy power up. Now with our headless install, what will happen is he'll power up and two things will already be happening. He'll have SSH access, which means we can access him remotely. I'll show you how to do that here in a moment. And he'll automatically connect to your Wi-Fi and get an IP address. It's, it's amazing, I love this. Now the only kicker is that you have to know what the IP address is when he gets it. And for most home networks, the router's just gonna give him a random IP address. And it's our job to now go find that. Luckily, it's not too crazy. All we have to do is log into your router and it'll tell us. So now for me, I'm using Ubiquity or Unify. So I'm gonna log into my router and show you what mine looks like. Now I can't show you what yours looks like because there's a lot of routers out there. I don't know what you have. But what we're aiming for is the clients or the host in your network. Most routers will give you a list of that. And look at the latest one, the last one to grab an IP address. And there's my guy right there. Now I have a lot of stuff going on in my network, so don't pay attention to that. But there he is, there's his IP address, 10.7.1.182. Yours will probably be different. Just find out what that is. And once you have your IP address, we can launch our terminal or CMD in Windows. It'll be terminal on Mac and Linux, and we can magically access him remotely. Check this out. The command will be, and this is across the board, all the same, ssh space pi, which is our user, at the IP address of your Raspberry Pi. 10.7.1.182 is mine, and let's do it. Fingerprints, yes, I want to accept it. And then the password we just set for our pi user. Ew, oh, you're in. Okay, cool. <sighs> Now, I know you're like here in the command line, you wanna keep going, but we're gonna step away at you for just one second. I know, I know, it's okay. First, we have to set up an account with Mist or mistnodes.com. So go ahead and fire up your favorite web browser. I'm gonna bring a window over here and navigate out to mistnodes.com. And first of all, if I haven't already sold you on this, then earn while you sleep, come on, that's a great tagline. Anyways, <laughs> now we're gonna click on get started to go ahead and sign up and create an account. It's free. And it's a great way to manage your nodes if you want to have more than one. Now, I already have an account, so I'm going to get signed in here. And if you're still here looking at the same page, go and click on Get Started Once More. And it should take you to a, well, <laughs> a Getting Started page. And here, I told you, we have some options. You can pretty much put Mysterium on anything. But what we care about right now is a Raspberry Pi, so I'll go ahead and select that guy right here. Again, with the options, I know. <laughs> but the one we're gonna do right now is I already have a Raspberry Pi device. He's ready to go. Just help me do this. So we're gonna select that option. See, I have this. And now, first of all, how sick is that graphic? Anyways, I can sit there and watch that all day. Just a little coffee break for this. Just watch it for a sec. Super cool. Now over here on the right is pretty much the steps we're going to follow, but not exactly, because I did forget one thing that I hit and it was super annoying. So just hang tight. Good news is we've already done step one and step two. So bam, knock that sucker out. Step three is where it gets a bit tricky, but don't worry, we'll walk through it together. So real quick with me right now, we're gonna grab all of these commands here. Just go ahead and grab it, or highlight it, copy it, open up your terminal, and then just paste that in there, right here, and hit enter. Now, it might sound like I lied, because like, <laughs> there's no error. It looks good, like we're fine, Chuck, I'm fine. Hold on a second. Let's go back to our term, or back to the uh, instructions here. We knocked out step three, but now step four is where things get a little hairy. We're gonna run this command here, sudo apt update. Let's try it out. sudo apt update. Now what this will do 
just in case you're wondering. Actually, first, what do we do up here? Up here, we added a new repository to our list of repositories. What's a repository? It's a list of stuff we're allowed to install, or we can install. To be able to install Mist, we have to have this repository here. So with that command, we added it. Now with the sudo apt update command, we're gonna go, whoa, hey, new repository. Can I get a list of everything you have? So we're gonna do that right now. Go ahead and hit enter and get ready for some pain. It's gonna give you an error. I know it's coming. Because it seems like everything's going well, but it's not. Ah, there it is. I hope because I warned you it wasn't so bad, but check it out. The big scary error we have right now is the following signatures could not be verified because the public key is not available, blah, blah, blah. Basically, we added that new repository and the Raspberry Pi is like, hey, I don't trust that guy. I don't know him. I couldn't verify who he is. What we have to do is tell the Raspberry Pi, hey, hey, it's okay. I know this guy, he's fine. Here's his public key. Let's add that real quick. One simple, actually two simple commands. It's not that scary, trust me. So here we go, here's the first command. Go ahead and copy and paste from below. Paste another right there. Now what's happening here is we're downloading the public key for this guy right here. Notice how we're referencing him down here in this command. So go ahead and hit enter to download that. Got it. And one more thing we have to do. I'm gonna copy and paste the second command. Paste that in here. This will actually add that key to our list and we should be good. That was pretty harmless, pretty painless, right? Now, now we could do sudo apt update once more, and fingers crossed, hold my coffee, take a sip, we'll be fine. Oh, no errors, I love that. Okay, now we're good to go. Now looking back at our miss sucker here, with just one more command, we can finish this out. sudo apt install mist. Let's go ahead and type it in together. Ready? sudo apt, ah, not pat, <laughs> sudo apt install mist, and then we'll do a space dash y after that to say yeah, we do wanna install it, because it's gonna ask you here in a minute. And let's go ahead and tell it yeah. Here we go, hit enter. Oh, here we go. Now, hang tight here for a second. I'm gonna go ahead and drink some coffee while it's doing this. It's gonna prompt you with one more thing. Mm. Ah, see, I told you. Go ahead and hit tab and enter for the okay. Accept everything, all terms and conditions blindly, like always, yes, and then we're solid. It's installing. All we have to do now is just wait for it. So um, I'm actually gonna go get some more coffee. I'll be right back. I'll see you here in a bit. Oh, ah, just burnt my tongue. Ah, too hot. Anyways, oh, it finished. Awesome. So if you see that sucker successfully finished right there, then you're good. Gosh, I can't feel my tongue, my taste buds are gone. <laughs> so now here comes the fun part. You ready? Let's go to our web browser once more. And actually right here in Miss Notes, this may work for you. From here, we can click on Claim Node and it may just find it for you once you've, you've completed all the steps. So click on Claim Node and it's gonna search you. As long as the computer you're using and your Raspberry Pi are on the same network, the same subnet, it should find you and automatically go boom. Let's set you up. Now for me, I'm getting super impatient. I don't wanna wait. I'm gonna click on claim node manually. And this actually gives us a chance to access our Raspberry Pi directly. Cause he does have a GUI or a web GUI we can access. Check this out. I'll open up a new tab. Come on, there we go. And navigate out to 10.7.1.182, the IP address of my Raspberry Pi. And then I'll do colon 44 Four, nine, or port 4449. Here we go. Ah, yes, almost there, I think. Oh, heck yeah. My little node runner, he's ready to go. Let's go ahead and click on start node setup. And the first thing we get hit with is this, a default withdrawal address. Withdrawal, that's a hard word to say. <laughs> what is that? It's basically an Ethereum wallet or an ERC20 based wallet, AKA a crypto wallet. And we need this because when we mine MIST tokens, they have to send it to us somehow, and that's where we're gonna keep it, our Ethereum based wallet. Now, if you don't already have one, oh my gosh, it's so simple to set up one. Let me walk you through it real quick. Put 20 seconds on the clock, let's knock the sucker out. Open up your favorite web browser. It's already here, go ahead and do that. Go to google.com and search for MetaMask Wallet. Ah, but spell it right. I'm gonna click on that first link I see, cause that's the one I wanted to go to, metamask.io, and then I'll click on download now. And what's cool is this won't be a download, it'll be an extension in your browser. So if you're using Chrome, Brave, and I even believe uh, Firefox, yeah, all three of the main ones we use, it'll have a plugin. Now I'm actually in Brave right now, but I'll click on install MetaMask for Chrome and it should work, I think. Yeah, oddly enough, I'll click on add to Brave at the top here, and it's gonna do its thing. Actually, hold on, add extension, there we go. And it's been added. Now, let's go ahead and click on that icon here at the top right, or our puzzle piece, and open up MetaMask. We'll go through a quick get started thing here. Create a new wallet. I agree to everything blindly. Put a password in. I agree to all things blindly once more. Click next, remind me later. And finally, right here where you see account one is our Ethereum wallet. You can just click it and it'll automatically copy to your clipboard. And if we get back to our Mysterium node runner setup, I'll just paste that sucker in there. 
Ha <laughs> ha, that's it. Did I make the 20 seconds? I don't know, I don't know how that works. Anyways, click on next. Now here's where it gets a bit hairy. If you're doing this early in the day, you might have this option not grayed out, totally available to you. You can register for free and don't have to worry about a thing. But if you're like me and you don't have this option right now, that means they capped the number of freely available accounts for that day. So now here's your option here. You can either wait until tomorrow and see if you can get that free registration, which is not a big deal. I'm doing this around 3.48 p.m. So I imagine if you wake up in the morning, you should have an option to. If not, you can do one of two things. Either deposit this token, which is extremely difficult. <laughs> so don't do that, I had to do that. Or you can simply buy some mist with a credit card or debit card. This will cost you a total of $1. <laughs> That's it, $1 and you're good to go. So I'm gonna do that real quick actually. Click on buy it with a credit card or debit card. Click on USD, click on next. And I'll just put in my info and click on pay. Do that right now, pay $1 USD. Payment approved, awesome. I'll close this window. I'll wait for a second to have that mist received. Just gonna drink coffee and sit here nervously until it does. Man, it's taking a bit. I'm kind of nervous. Ugh. Come on. Okay, for real? Hmm. Okay. Whew. <laughs> it's good. It's good. I want to download my invoice just for fun. Give that to my accountant. I'll be like, what the junk is this? Click on next. And now we're on to the fun parts. I'll set my password for my node here, my Raspberry Pi UI. And also on the bottom here, I can claim this node in my mistnodes.com, which I want to do. I want to centrally manage all my nodes. It's looking for my API token, which I had right over here. It's to enter this when asked. Well, I've been asked. Let me go enter that now. I'm gonna copy that address, put it here, and click on save and continue. And now the hard part's done. It's going to register your identity, which again, remember your identity is just on the blockchain. It's a random string of numbers and characters. It's not Chuck, it's not Ben, it's not Angela. It's, it's, <laughs> blah, 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 <laughs> you know? It's actually this right here, I believe. This right here in the middle. Now, once your identity is registered, you'll see something like this, your dashboard. And from the get-go, not a lot happening here because you just got set up. The cool part is that you don't have to do much. Like, everything's pretty much on autopilot. It's on default. Leave it alone, it'll do its thing. Now, again, this guy is fresh and new, not a lot happening here. Let me show you one that's been up for a while and what might be possible. Let me show you real quick. Now this one's been working. Look at all this. I've got the mist I've earned. I've got all the sessions that's been going on through my Raspberry Pi, which there's a lot through the Netherlands. Let me show you a, a full list, give you a full scope of what's going on. I'll view all sessions and go through here. Yeah, look at all this. India, Morocco, Egypt, Saudi Arabia. That's so cool. Iran, Algeria, Philippines. And yeah, that's pretty much it. That's the setup, it's done. And of course you can look at all these nodes in your dashboard. Now I have a lot going on here because I've been experimenting with the cloud. Um, but you can add a bunch more, <laughs> so it's really fun. But anyways, decentralized VPN, <laughs> Mysterium. It's kind of awesome, right? Even if you don't care about cryptocurrency, you think it's a fad or whatever, the technology behind this is pretty cool. Like even now, check this out. If I look at one of my nodes here, the one I just created, if I go to the settings here, right now you can see my identity. That is on the blockchain. If I go to Etherscan, which is how you can look at uh, all kinds of stuff on the uh, Ethereum network. If I search for that, there it is. That's my identity on the blockchain. I'm not Chuck at NetworkChuck.com. I'm not Network Chuck or Chuck Keith or whatever. I'm an address on the blockchain. I'm anonymous. Anyways, I think this is really cool. Just the technology behind it, decentralized VPN. And the fact that it's using blockchain and you can share your bandwidth and earn cryptocurrency, that's pretty cool. Now, again, I don't know if it's gonna go anywhere as far as like actual earning potential. This is not financial advice. I think it's the, the tech is just cool. I wanted to try this out just cause the tech is awesome. Anyways, let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you think this is a neat idea? Do you think blockchain is the future? Are you gonna try out Mysterium VPN and see how it is? Now, in this video, I showed you how to set up as a node runner. If you wanna set up Mysterium VPN as a client, if you wanna access it and use it, I will include that in my bonus content. Uh, check out my free membership on networkchuck.com and you'll be able to access it there. Again, it's a free membership. And I would've put it here, but I think the video already is outrageously long because I did not realize how much I had to explain in this. Oh boy, it's late already. I had so much coffee and it's late and I need to go eat dinner. <laughs> and also, man, have you hacked the YouTube algorithm today? Let's make sure you do. Hit that like button, subscribe, notification bell, comment. You gotta hack YouTube today, ethically, of course. Yeah, that's all I have. I'll catch you guys next time.